We got Nishan Garrett here at Colorado Springs at the Men's Freestyle National Team Camp. Um, you're back after injury. It's your first camp back. How are you feeling? What's it like being around these guys again? Uh, it's amazing being back. Uh, one thing I was at least pride myself in is being friends with everybody, being cool with my competitors, being cool with people on my team. And so it's a real joy for me to be around them. It's a real joy for me to engage with them, pick their brains about different things, learn. And my goal is always to be growing, to be bettering myself every single day. Obviously last year a setback, not being able to go to Worlds after getting injured, um, after making the team. When that happened, I guess, what was what was the mindset like? What did you have to push through? What, what did you have to kind of deal with in those moments? I think the first thing that I needed to do and the first thing that actually came a lot easier than I thought it would was just acceptance. Accepting that it was something that happened. Accepting that it was something that was out of my control. I did everything that I needed to do that was right to do. And still this, what I would call, I'd use the word injustice, was was kind of happened to me. Now, coming from that perspective, I believe that people who experience injustice become creditors to the world. These are big words, but I'll explain in a second. So that means that when you experience an injustice, when you experience something wrong, or something you did wrong, or something had happened that, that wasn't supposed to happen, or if you feel like you put a lot of effort, energy, work, or time into something you felt like had a lot of value, and you experience it being taken away or stripped in a, in a way that, that didn't seem right or didn't seem fair, you learn how to forgive, you learn how to care, you learn how to treat other people in the same situation, you learn how to comfort other people, you gain an experience of knowledge in this defeated state that ultimately grows you to be a better person later on in life. And now people who go through that situation, now people who go through those trying times, you can be a comfort and a light to them in their dark place. So that's that's what I pulled from it. And so I learned. I learned, yeah, it was depressing. Yeah, it was difficult. Yeah, it was hard. There was times when I didn't know where my focus was, where my trajectory was going. And it was it was worked out time I don't think that time heals all wounds but I, I, I definitely think that time is given so that you can be intentional about healing the wounds that need to be healed yeah um, so like obviously there's a journey that you've gone through as you just kind of explained how did that like help shape your mentality going into the next season of your wrestling career right so I think I had to do everything in my power that I could do. And so it forced me to find other options. It forced me to think in different ways. I wouldn't necessarily call myself the most technical wrestler, but now I'm putting myself in mental situations because I can't wrestle. Now I'm visualizing a little bit more. Now I'm, it's a process of working on your mind and you know, sometimes when you're working on your physical body so much, you don't put as much time and effort into the mind work or your mental wellness or your soul. And that's, your soul, wellness of your soul is just as important as the wellness of your physical body. We need to recover our souls and our minds just as much as we need to recover our bodies after a hard workout. Fueling right, you know, doing the right things with our bodies. So it's, they're hand in hand. So obviously we've just finished up with World Team Trials for 2019. You weren't you weren't there. Um, I didn't I didn't know exactly. Were you still injured or what was the situation there? I guess? At the World Team Trials. Yeah. yeah. So I hadn't gotten cleared to go re to wrestle live. I was training to wrestle, and I think maybe the lack of yes, you're prepared. The lack of you know, really being confident and knowing. I didn't want to go in there with a doubt. I didn't want to go in there saying, we'll see. And you know, I don't mean to give myself too much credit, but I, I, think, I'm, I think I'm at at least a level enough where I don't have to go into tournaments saying, hey, we'll see what happens. I believe that I can at least have a mentality that says, it makes sense that I win this. Yeah. 
I'm not saying that's not going to be hard, but I should go in having that mentality. I can beat these guys. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so with 2020 coming up, it's next thing for you. What are your plans for it? And I guess how have you already started putting those plans in action? Plans in action, yeah. So I don't know if I've never been on an Olympic team before. I've never, you know, done a soccer before. But I know that the pursuit of something of that status is done in not just a nine to twelve month period. It's 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 years of work. It's years of time and years of effort. So I have been doing a lot of preparation just in the years that we've come up to this point, but specifically honing in on some of the details with regards to weight, you know, going down to 57 kilos, making my descent in that direction, uh, muscular endurance, getting to that point of muscular fatigue to where I can continue to compete for five matches, you know, and go the whole match if I need to go the whole match. And yeah, just testing my skills against the best guys in the, the country. And that's what this amazing opportunity to be here has opened up for me, to wrestle the best guys and be in the same atmosphere and pick their brains and find out what they're doing, find out what's going on with people and ultimately, uh, yeah, just see an increase in my own potential. That's awesome. Well, thanks for chatting with us. Good luck in the season.